Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rob. Let's draw Cami, Jury, and Chun Li. These three ladies are from the Capcom fighting game franchise Street Fighter, more specifically Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, in the case of Jury. So, for this composition, since I have three characters, I decided to go with a triangular shape, triangular composition, uh, something action-packed, something where they're all three involved in actually fighting. So something like that really demands simple one-point perspective. You don't want to get too crazy with a composition like that um, because it can start to get muddled, um, unreadable as it, as it is. So I first sketched out a skeleton for Chun-Li. She'll be on the bottom left. And now I'm working on the skeleton for a jury. She's in the air for various reasons. I mean, this is one of her more common attacks. This is actually her overhead. Um, not the special dive kick, but I think it speaks pretty well to the overall arsenal of this character to have Jury in the air. I mean, she is fairly mobile. Chun-Li, of course, was doing her, her normal low hard kick sweep move but it looks very graceful it's very pointed so I thought that went well with the uh, the general look of her costume so now I'm sketching out the skeleton for Cami. I couldn't really decide what out of her arsenal fit best with this composition so I simply used her focus attack um, like the initial frame of her focus attack or the final frames of her back dash And I chose this particular alignment because I knew that with Jury doing a dive kick and Chun-Li doing an, a move in opposition to it, we needed something to balance out that, that direction of motion, that visual sense of motion um, on the side with Cami. So her ponytails are pointing down, back toward the bottom left now corner of the image. This helps uh, balance the, the entire thing out against uh, Jury's leg there and then the trail of her, uh, her sash. And it creates a nice sort of, you know, very, very linear movement of the eye through the image. So fairly happy with the skeletons now. I'm filling in the overall forms uh, of the characters. Notice at this point though that I'm not taking into account any of the costumes. That, that would distract too much. You want to make sure you want to get the anatomy right first and then put the, the clothing, the costumes on top of that. You can see here even that I'm drawing through the characters to some extent just to make sure that I get everything in the page as I should. As you can see, Jury's head is directly aligned above the vanishing point, which makes her sort of center of this triangle, this equilateral triangle. So as part of the composition, I made sure that I had Chun-Li's hand, the supporting hand, pointing to the corner of the page, and I wanted to make sure that I had Cammy's foot doing the same on the opposite side. It's important that they both lead to the same point. Otherwise, the composition would feel unbalanced to either side, and I didn't want that. So now that I'm pretty happy with overall the anatomy and the, the composition, I'm erasing my guidelines just so I have a clean working surface and I'm going to start blocking in the costumes. Now with Cammy's costume, there's not really too much there to work with. There aren't a whole lot of pieces. It's basically just a leotard and, you know, boots and gloves. So, nothing really too spectacular there. Didn't take very long at all. Jury's pants, on the other hand, 
are very baggy and they're kind of a cross between chaps and traditional taekwondo leggings so that that took a little bit of thought um, just visualizing really before I even started drawing it visualizing how the folds are gonna go where the bulk of the pants are gonna be just you know in my head working out the masses before I actually started drawing it with Chun-Li um, not so much effort was necessary because the only parts that are really even the slightest bit involved are the, um, the little flappy skirts right above, right below her belt. But really, since those are meant to be loose pieces of fabric, they they behave more like a cloak would or a loose coat. So not too complicated, not too many wrinkles there. Now I'm blocking in the background. I'm putting them on the stage, uh, I think it's called Morning Mist Bay. Really, really simple stage. There's not even cloud cover to worry about because it's a misty, sort of overcast morning. Um, but that's not the main reason I chose it. The main reason I chose it is because it has very interesting lighting. It's a very warm, but desaturated kind of morning glow to it and I thought that was really good that would that would look really nice because these characters all three of them have very saturated colored costumes and they're all very contrasty Jury's got the purple and pink going on Chun-Li's got a very solid blue and cami has got you know the very strong green so those three together I thought was enough color information so I wanted to keep the background as simple and as quiet as I possibly could. So now I'm just knocking in the tones on my multiply layer using just plain black with varying levels of pressure. Now here I've erased out parts of it just so I can capture the highlights. You saw when I started um, doing in my tones that everything was, first I filled it with a 50% uh, gray. That way not everything is pure white because I want to pull out these highlights, these strong light sources, these colors. So now here I'm balancing out the tones, making sure that the background has less contrast range in the foreground. And now here I'm just adding in a simple color wash. There's that morning wash of color, that very simple warm glow. Now here we're getting the flesh tones. Cami is slightly more tanned than Jury. Chun-Li's leggings make her legs slightly darker. And now here, filling in all the gener generic costume colors.
Now with Cammy, there really isn't a whole lot to her costume. In retrospect, I probably should have chosen maybe her alternate costume or her Alpha 3 version, but this is her classic look. And on this particular channel, you know, this Let's Draw series, I try to stick as best I can to the, the more well-known looks, the more archetypical costumes, things like that, so that you can draw along with me. So I didn't really have a choice. I mean, I did have a choice, but I didn't. So I'm spending a lot of time here making sure that at the very least, her skin, her flesh tones have a lot of variation, a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the the actual lighting effects to it. That way, what we're actually seeing has some sort of interest to it. It's visually appealing somehow because there's not a lot of costume there to um, to really make her stand out. Chun Li and Jury have very strong, very bold costumes with strong silhouettes, things like that. Lots of pattern variation. So, to keep Cammy interesting and as you know, to keep her in the forefront of the image, I had to make sure that, at the very least, her skin stood out because that's the part that's the most exposed. So I'm taking a lot of time using um, very light opacity to try and bring out the the play of light across her skin. giving her a sort of glow, really. Making sure to take into account things like subsurface scattering, making sure that I take into account the fact that skin has a specular highlight to it, things like that. And just as a reminder, with subsurface scattering, what we're talking about is light traveling, not just on an object but through it and then bouncing out of it from a different point. Which has the aggregate effect of softening every every line, every shadow on flesh. I toyed around a little bit with her leotard um, because the material changes between different games. In Street Fighter 4, it's a sort of lycra, polyester type of material. But in previous games, in, in Super Street Fighter 2, where she was first introduced, it was more of a um, PVC maybe or it was something different. It was something shiny that had a lot of really interesting inner reflections and weird behaviors with, you know, light. Um, it had interesting bits of shadow and contrast wherever, you know, there was a muscle or a fold, things like that. So I, I tried to split the difference there with the way the material reacts to light. Because if it was just Lycra, there would be nothing to it. It'd be the most boring thing ever. So here I, I decided to make it you know, a little more reflective, uh, played up the specular highlights a bit using a much lighter shade of green on the points that would reflect light from the sun given its current position. Now with her hair, uh, there was there wasn't too much there to show off. I s hesitated a little because I wanted to introduce a sort of specular highlight to it, and make it a little shiny. But then I thought against it because, in reality, the specular highlight that her hair would have would just not be visible, uh, given the color of the light and how small she appears in the image. So to make the hair more interesting, I simply used a lighter color for the highlights than 
than I would have chosen otherwise. As you can see, there's actually three tones total that I'm using. And here, I'm just filling in the legs, cleaning it up, tightening things a bit. The camouflage pattern should be a lighter shade of green, almost similar to her leotard. Chose against that, however, and decided to go with something flesh toned because the green against her flesh would have it would have stood out a bit too much. And given that it's a camouflage pattern, something really irregular and really organic like that would have caught the attention. It would have pulled too much to the bottom right of the image. So I decided to tone down the saturation, just make it a simple almost, you know, flesh tone, almost brown camouflage pattern instead of what she normally has. Uh, with her gauntlets, similar ideas. Uh, I didn't go for the full level of detail that there's that she actually has. Like, there's actually bumps above the four front knuckles, things like that, but I decided to keep it out of the image just so that it could stay a little calmer, less visually distracting. I started to work on the ponytails and thought, man, that's a lot of effort. So I decided to do something a little more relaxing before I jumped into it. So I cleaned up her legs a bit more. Now in the recording, I'm not sure if this will show up, but her boots are a very dark shade of brown. Several tones and highlights, a couple of laces, things like that, which may or may not be vi visible on YouTube, but if you check out the high res image, you can see it. So back to the ponytails. See, to get the fine tapering of each lock, I ended up using a bit of the background color to paint over what I've already painted. It's an easy technique.
jury is a pretty easy thing to draw in in this particular composition because she really has a very simple um, costume. I mean, it's it's detailed, but the overall elements um, hang together fairly well. I mean, it's a really good design out of Capcom, honestly. It's it's one of their better, I think, out of the, the Street Fighter roster. It's unique, but it actually makes sense. And the overall... I don't know, it's just the elements hang together very nicely, so it's, it's definitely a very good job, Capcom. So, it makes it easy to paint because there's a lot of... There's detail, and then there's areas of rest, and there's detail, and then more areas of rest. It's very, it's very nice. There's a good contrast there. So, overall, I mean, you see how, how little time I have to spend here. It's, it's pretty easy because just it's, it hangs together so nicely. The bits from the initial sketch really didn't take very much cleaning up. Corrected the values of her sash a little bit. And now just tightening it up. I realized there that I'd forgotten the stripe would be visible somewhat on her extended leg, so I filled that in. Now there, I've got a slightly lighter shade of white, but it's tinted just a bit with the color of the environment. This is the light bouncing off of Chun-Li and bouncing off of the deck of the ship and coming back up to underlight her leg. Which gives it a little bit more believability. It seem more like the character is actually in the scene. When you're painting, you really want to try and pay some attention to global illumination effects. You want to think about how every everything in the scene, anything that receives light, could in itself be considered a light source. So when you have an object close to another object, you want to start thinking about how the light bouncing off of you know, these objects that are close together, the, what color that would be, how they would affect each other. Pretend like that object is a light source. Because in the real world it is. If I enter a room with walls painted red, and there's a lot, there, you know, the window's open or something, that red light will come off of the wall and illuminate me. So I won't appear the same in that red room as I would in a room with white walls or, you know, in a, in a room with green walls or whatever color you want. Light bounces around and it illuminates things differently, especially when they're close together. So as a general rule, whenever I have two things that are near each other, I have them share colors. You can either do that in this step that we're doing right now, with the actual paint over, or toward the end um, with just a very light, soft-edged um, brush. You can you can put in, you can simulate the effect using a, an airbrush type brush, or anything with a super soft edge and just low opacity. I prefer to do it in the paint over step though, for the most part, because you have more control over it. It doesn't spread as much. Now, here as I'm doing Chun Li's outfit, I painted all the stripes that would later be gold with flat black at first, because it makes it easier to paint over the gold later on and to allow me to do various lighting effects by simply varying my the pressure of my brush as I paint over it. You'll see more of that in a moment, but it's a good technique. It's, it's, it's better to think of it that way as you're painting. Just remember you can always paint over what you've already just done. 
So think of it think of it three dimensionally. You're not just painting to put a color on a particular pixel. You can paint and then paint over and have an interplay between those two things. You can use this to your advantage um, just to make certain things, certain tasks easier. Like when I was painting Chun Li's hair here, you just do it in multiple passes of differing colors depending on what you want to achieve and it makes it a lot easier than if you try to do it all at the final color up front. Which uh, I've seen a lot of beginning artists try to do. Okay now here, paint over the black with a bit of the gold, vary the pressure and you get lighting effects for free. And some of the edges there were bothering me. They were a bit messy. There you see? That's the uh, that's the take-home lesson, really. Just remember that as you're painting, you can always paint over. Never be afraid. Never hesitate to put your brush to canvas. You know, just paint. Just paint. It's digital art. You're not wasting resources. You're not gonna have to wait for it to dry or anything like that. Just paint. Paint right over it. Just keep putting down more and more pixels, more and more paint. Don't hesitate. Don't let yourself be bogged down or pressure too much by thinking, oh my god, I gotta get this right, this is so hard. Just put down, just put pixels on the canvas, man, it'll work out. Worst case scenario, there is an undo button, but don't let that drive you. Some people will tell you even to ignore the undo button and just simply always paint over everything. If you feel like you've made a mistake, paint over it. Well, I won't say that you need to do, you need to be like that hardcore about it. I do think that you should not really worry about using layers to separate out things just in case or to hammer on the undo button if you make a mistake. Just paint, just keep painting. there, just tighten up the anatomy a little bit more, making sure I got the foreshortening right on this boot. But for the most part, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty happy, so at this point, the painting is about done. Just needs to be tightened up a little more in particular areas. The values adjusted a bit, but we're pretty much there. gotta make sure all of the details are right. It's These characters just have such iconic costumes that if I forgot something, like the gold trim on Chun-Li's shoulder, I wouldn't be able to live with myself.